Jimmy Brooks. <laughs> I will remember that. I've got a good memory. And we are live. Welcome back to part seven of Free Roam Fridays. We did a lot of exploring up north. Let's get started. We needed to film the Violet Snowdrop location for another video, so I used this Arthur to open up the map. We took the train. I do prefer the stagecoach, but we can't use it to get to a location that hasn't been opened up on the map. For that, we need the train. We could just take the horse, but who has time for that? Nice to see you. Enjoy your trip. And let's take a moment to appreciate the architecture of the train and that beautiful billowing smoke. It's so easy to take these details for granted and it's just another element that adds to the immersive quality of the game. Tracks are the fastest way up there. I did expect to run into a cougar, but we got lucky. We did almost get taken out by a train, however. The bridge is the worst case scenario. 
The trick is to not panic and have a recent save in case the worst happens. And always remember, horses are faster than trains in this game. That's how you can use them to jump on a train. And here is Marco's lab. It's all locked up. We won't meet Marco until chapter 4, and as this playthrough will never leave chapter 2, I guess that means we're never meeting Marco. Still a cool location and a great landmark for Violet Snowdrop. which you can find here. Marco's lab is called Dover Hill. And as long as we're up here, we might as well go after the legendary moose. Okay. Sure. I better get moving. Here is the location of the first clue, a tree rub south of the tracks. Must be close. I saw movement, but he's gone.
There's a stranger around here, but I'm worried if we interact we'll lose the moose. Let's pick up the trail again. There he is. Take the shot. And look at that beauty. He's huge. We need to get him to the trapper. However, we are so close to the meteor house, we should investigate. And there will be another abandoned trading post up here that Arthur will want to draw. Arthur really likes his abandoned trading posts. <laughs> Note the violet snowdrop that Arthur drew along with the trading post, and he writes, Thought this old trading post in Roanoke Ridge was kind of interesting. There are some random supplies inside we can collect, along with a Gems of Beauty cigarette card. Here's Isabella Barlow. Come on, girl. Get here. And here's your map, across the tracks from Marco's lab and on the way to the meteorite house. Moving on. Yep. The meteorite house is on the edge of a cliff. Odd location, but I imagine fantastic views. <laughs> What the hell? And inside we have some carnage. Looks like that poor fella's tongue exploded out of his head. <coughs> However, we can take this smoking, glowing, and quite possibly radioactive meteorite if we want. And oh boy. Do we want? And then we can raid all the supplies. It's not like these guys are going to be needing them.
Oi! can also climb on the roof and inspect the house. Arthur will make a sketch and write, this house seems to have been hit by something. A meteor, maybe. You've heard of the smoking gun, here is the smoking hole. Really wish we could jump through it. And here is your map, west of Brandywine Drop on the top of the map. Moving on. We will cross the tracks again and search for the Meteor Crater. Very cool. This location always reminds me of the Tunguska event, which was a massive explosion over a Siberian forest in 1908. To quote Wikipedia, it was classified as an impact event, though no impact crater has ever been found. It leveled 830 square miles of forest, and here is a photo from 1927. So maybe a meteorite, or maybe a UFO crash. And this was in pre-revolutionary Russia, so maybe the Tsar was testing out some kind of steampunk nuke. Maybe Rasputin was involved. So many questions, but I digress. Let's return to our meteor crater. Arthur will sketch again and will write, found a rock that fell from the heavens. And here is a second meteorite we can collect. And here is your map, northwest of Roanoke Valley and across the tracks from the meteorite house. Let's get that pelt to the trappers. Welcome back. So, oh, what do you have for me? Oh, 
Okay, let's take a look at it. Let's get rid of these snakes and the legendary elk pelt. The trapper will be pleased. A lot of folk hunt, but not so many know their way around a needle and thread. It's good business, I'm telling you. And then back to Snake Island we go to work on our saddle. Here's one. And here's another. Note that it's the exact same location as the last one. And here is Bonnie's gentleman friend. I got a comment saying as long as we don't loot him and read his letter, he'll keep respawning. I wish I knew who said that, I'd certainly give them a shout out, but that comment was lost in the deluge. But thanks friend, we certainly need the cash. This video is sponsored by Batman Tonio, my second gaming channel where I play every other video game that isn't Red Dead Redemption 2. Like and subscribe for longer format deep dive gaming commentaries where I overanalyze and focus on the details. And then back to the trappers who has teleported across the map so we can cash in our snakes and get our new saddle. Good to see you again. Right, let's see. I hope you make something pretty with that. All made to measure. The Rattlesnake Vaquero Saddle, one of the finest in the game. Thank you very much. And I've said it before, but note the price. This saddle is free. The Trapper is happy to make it for you at no cost, as long as you have the right materials. Let's head into the Strawberry Stable and see how it looks. I got space for you if you need stabling. Here are the stats if you're interested. It's my favorite saddle in the game. Safe travels. Remember to rest that horse sometimes.
And then I was researching a route for Horseman 6 and wondered what the terrain would be like if we just followed the river. Doesn't look like we gained that much time, and we still have to get to the bridge. The story is, lady, you're going in. And then we might as well help this lady out. We will lose honor when we kill the lawman, and then gain honor when we rescue the lady. Shoot the lockout for extra style points. as a dog's hind leg. Now apparently he works with the old Driscoll boys. Interesting. Anyway, thanks again. I'm gonna get on out of here. Keep your head down. Don't trust anyone. Now go! <laughs> and then we take care of this witness and lose honor again. Well, that's life in the Old West. And finally, let's talk to Maximo. I just don't understand this at all. Hey, over here! What's the problem? Problem? No, there's no problem. Quite the contrary. Well, there is a problem. For me, but not for you. All right. <laughs> I ain't got time for no, this. No, no, wait! Give me a minute of your life. I might just change it forever. I'm sure you will have heard of me. Maximo Cristobal Valdespino, the renowned explorer. Can't say I have. There has been much written about me. I once had high tea with the Viceroy of India. I helped liberate South America. I've climbed mountains and swum across seas. I have had many women. Look at Arthur, completely uninterested. I've spent the last three months hunting treasure on the American frontier. Beautiful country! Reminds me a lot of Almeria. Almeria, in case you didn't know, is a region in Spain where they just happened to film The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. I learned this during my research for The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly commentary, which I have yet to complete. It's taking a while because it's going to be a three-hour video. But tomorrow I set sail for the island of Shikoku in the Japanese archipelago in search of the legendary Tokushima Sapphire. Mm. Well, good for you. No, no, hold on. You see this map here? It was made by the Jack Hall gang. They robbed banks all the way from here to California. Yeah, I know who the Jack Hall gang are. Oh, them you have heard of, but me? Huh. Well, uh, rumor has it, they buried gold somewhere in this area, but were killed before they could retrieve it. They created two maps to ensure it was well hidden. This is the first and should lead you to the second. You just need to follow the landmarks drawn here. Me? Yes! Unfortunately, I am out of time now, but I am prepared to sell it to you for the low price of... ten dollars. A trifling investment for a man such as you, given the potential returns. 
So we can rob, which just seems rude, or we can decline and he will counteroffer. You must think I was born yesterday. <clears throat> Between us, this map has proven a challenge even for me. So, how about I sell it to you for just five dollars? One half less. Uh, why the hell not? Nah, can't be that hard to suss out. Excellent! I don't think you will regret it. Five bucks for three gold bars? That is a great deal, friends, and a fantastic ROI. Owen, let's check out these horses. A herd of wild Morgans, so pretty. This is also a great location for the flax and chestnut Hungarian half-bred. It's the first place I'd look. And finally, we will deal with Reverend Swanson, off camera. We'll get him back home. There is a cigarette cart up here along with a fantastic view. And here, my friends, looks like a cool place to stop. I hope you enjoyed watching this commentary as much as I enjoyed making it. On Fridays, we free roam. We finally have our saddle and we can get back to work on our satchel. And maybe we'll go grab an Arabian so we can work on Horseman 6. I'll see you next week. I'm Super Antonio. Thanks for watching. I appreciate your views. Like, comment, share, and subscribe, and hit that notification bell for daily Red Dead Redemption 2 content, and we shall meet again. Further on down the trail. What's your name, boy? I don't know.